Let's talk safety. So you're getting ready to go out, you're getting ready to buy your kayak, you're gonna get all kinds of different things thrown in your face. You're gonna get haul designs and all these other things. Uh, what tracks better, what, you know, what kind of weight capacity we're gonna have. There's a lot in just looking for a kayak. But usually what happens is when people go looking for kayaks, they kind of overlook some of the safety things that you might need to have when you're on a kayak. For instance, here in the state of Florida, I had a kayak for a number of years before I realized I had to have some kind of whistle and some kind of PFD or something like that. I really didn't care at the time. I was only in shallow water. I can swim, been raised in a river. I should have this, I'm good to go, right? Wrong, I got taught the hard way. I got a ticket one time for not having a PFD aboard. That was a bad thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over a couple of things. Number one, I'm gonna go over what my state state of Florida requires of me to have on my boat okay on my kayak then I'm going to go over what I actually carry and why there is a difference between obeying the law and having common sense and being safe while you're doing something I like to have common sense and I like to be safe while I'm doing something why because I like to come back home I enjoy my family enjoy my wife I like to come back home so in order to come back home, I have to plan for the worst that can happen. Now, anybody who is a sailor will tell you, you plan for the worst that can happen and you hope for the best. You get yourself out of a lot of good situations that way. I can't tell you how many wrecks or, you know, people being in trouble and all this stuff was simply because they did not have a plan. Or they didn't plan for the worst. They didn't think that could happen to them. This also applies to kayaking. Now I'm not going on about fishing kayaks or anything like that. I'm just talking about the sport of kayaking and being on the water in general on anything that floats that you can move around or maneuver. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is PFDs. Now, PFDs, personal, flotation device there's a lot of them on the market you want something that's comfortable and it's there now in my state pfds have to be coast guard approved it says right here on the inside amongst all this information u.s coast guard approved number and then blah 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 blah, blah whatever that number is okay now what that means is that this company took this design and one of them to the Coast Guard and had them look at it and say, yes, we approve that. They have to have that. You can't just throw something on and say, well, this floats, it'll help me. Bad idea. Case in point, this is not a PFD. Obviously, no Coast Guard stamp. You know, it's not gonna be approved. Will it float? Yes, of course it will. It's made out of big, thick foam. However, will it float you? You know what, I don't know. I've not tested it. You know why I've not tested it? I wear a PFD instead. This is comfortable, yes, but don't rely on something like this to save your life. It's kind of a bad idea. The next thing that Florida requires me to have on my boat is some kind of audible signal. In other words, some kind of horn, or anything like that, something that I can, that's very loud and I can get somebody's attention right away if I'm in trouble or you know somebody coming at me or something happens. In Florida, you can have a whistle. This is a shoreline marine whistle. Um, it's you know saltwater resistant, very loud, obviously very loud. I carry this, I just tie it to my PFD right like this. I have no problem with it and it's always there when I need it. The next thing that the state of Florida requires me to have is a visual aid. Something that people can see me afar off. That's pretty much all it's for. If you're going out at night, um, you know, you want some kind of visual aid that allows you to say, hey, I'm here, you know, don't run over me. That'd be kind of a bad thing. We don't want that. So you want something out there, to, not only that, but I mean, to be honest with you, if you're on a kayak at night, um, there's not any light anyway, so you're gonna have some kind of flashlight on you. 
This is what the state requires. That doesn't mean this is all you need to have. A lot of guys, including myself, have a light pole in the back that goes up over their head that will allow people to see you from a couple of miles away. Um, The rest of the stuff that I'm gonna go over is what I call CSE, or common sense equipment. Stuff that you don't have to have, but it might behoove you to take with you to get you home. Now, the first thing I'm gonna go over is knives. It, it, I think, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that you should be required to take some kind of a cutting device with you. If something happens and you have to cut yourself free, um, you're gonna need some kind of a blade to do it. You can't just, some of the stuff, I don't care how strong you are, small cords at a quarter inch, you can't rip apart. However, a blade will come right to it. Now, this is a dagger I picked up online. This is a pocket knife uh, I carry with me all the time. One of the things I've started carrying here lately because I, I have been in need of it is a multi-tool. Multi-tools are fantastic. Not only are they multiple use, but they're just daggone handy. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is GPS, Global Positioning Systems. Now, these are important for a number of things. It is not hard on the water to get lost. A lot of people carry their phones and they got GPSs on their phones. And I'm gonna tell you, that's awesome. But phones die quickly. So don't just rely on that phone. A fish finder with a GPS chart plotter isn't very much more money at all when it comes to digging you out of somewhere. Another thing is I carry with me is a handheld GPS because if my battery dies on this, these things last for a really, really, really long time. My battery on my boat only lasts about three trips. This thing will last me for months because I only turn it on when I need to. I recommend that you have some kind of GPS on your boat no matter what it is. I know cell phones are popular for that, but it's always good to have a backup. One of the things that people really don't think about is a time device. In other words, a watch, a pocket watch, a wristwatch, something like that, um, that gives the time in a non-digital format. You really can't go wrong with it. And you should always know, especially if you're around any kind of tidal situation, you should always know that the time and what time of day it is. The next thing we're gonna talk about is a very controversial setup. It's an anchor. I have been in numerous situations where I've had to stop my boat. We don't know what's gonna to happen to us out there, but we do know what could happen. And this is what we try to prevent, is anything that could happen. And being able to stop your boat in any given situation is a must. So have something tied to a rope, you, somewhere between four and seven pounds, this one's five, just something that you can stop your boat. Here in Florida, melanoma is real. I can't tell you how many times I've seen old farmers and stuff that have been in Florida for a long time out in the sun all day where they've got cancer skin all over them from just the UV and everything that's beating down on you all the time. First of all, when I go out, I always have some kind of a cover for my face, some kind of a shield. These things, uh, my wife actually made this one. It cost me like a buck 50 to have her make it. You, you can buy them for as little as a couple of dollars or as much as $30. It just depends on your preference. But you should always have one that is snug on your face so it doesn't blow off. The next thing I have is dry fit shirts and dry fit pants. The reason for dry fit shirt and pants is because they rapidly dry. It's uncomfortable to be wet on the water. We, we love the water, but we want to be able to dry off when we're not in the water. And cotton and those kind of things really hold water for a really long time. And these really don't. They dry within, I've had them down in the water after just 30 minutes being completely dry. So dry fit is the way to go. And hats. I can't stress enough the use of a good hat. These are a must in Florida. You will sunburn in a matter of minutes otherwise. This is a dry fit, so if it gets wet, it, it dries right away. This is a summer hat. You'll see me wear a lot of boonies in the winter. You'll see me wear the big heavy cotton ones and they keep me warmer. Dry fit hat. Another popular hat are, are these right here, the straw hats. These things are fantastic. For me, the bigger the brim, the better. I think the folks that invented the sombrero are geniuses. The last thing I want to talk to you about are paddles. Now, I can't tell you how many times we've been out uh, with folks and they've broken a paddle. 
the last thing you want to be is out on the water in a small craft without a way to steer it or without a way to move it. You should always keep a spare paddle inside the hull of your kayak. I hope that helps you along the lines of safety for the boat. Like I said, being a boat guy and being on a boat my, you know, for the last couple of 10 years, um, I've learned a lot about what you need or what you might need or these kind of things. So I'm not telling you, hey, you need to do this. I'm saying over the years, experience has taught me that I've needed these things. If the video helped you out, punch a like button. If you wanna see more, subscribe. If it'll help somebody else, share it over to them.